Hello travelers, Boardman21 here, and today we're going to discuss some of the top leveling slash builds for the mage class to get you started in 1.0 fresh on that new cycle with new content. Now remember we don't have patch notes yet, some things are probably going to change, but I doubt that much will change with the mage class as it's not the primary focus of 1.0. That's going to be the two new masteries, the Warlock and the Falconer. So if you haven't played Last Epoch or you really just really love the mage and you're wondering which build that you should start with for that class well hopefully one of these six that I show you is something that looks really fun and I can pretty much tell you that I've played all of them and they're all pretty enjoyable so with that let's go ahead and dive into what these six builds are Coming in at number one, I have the Glacier Mage Sorcerer for you. And with this, you're going to use Glacier, which is a three hit skill. Each hit that it does goes into a larger area. So it starts off with a small explosion, then a medium explosion, and then a large explosion. The cool thing that scales really well with this build is that you can build into a ton of crit chance, get to 100% crit with it. And then also, as you scale your mana up, you get a percentage of your mana back on crits that you do and enemies you kill. And since you can crit many enemies at once with its AoE and you can get three hits on the same target with your small, large, and medium explosion, that allows you to basically get all of your mana back. And when you get your mana really under control and have a ton of it, you can even throw on a Harbinger of Star's Belt later and crit meteors without having to cast them out of the sky on the crits that you do as well, which is really, really awesome. It's a little ice and fire build. So there's definitely tons of different ways to do it in the end game, but it scales through the campaign really well it's one of the hardest hitting skills for leveling up as well which makes it feel really really good and it's not dependent on any uniques or idols although you can add some later to really make it pop in the end game Coming in at number two, we have the Frost Claw Rune Master, and this one presented by McFluffin. And with this one, you get this skill as it is one of the newer skills in the game, along with the Rune Master, the newest mastery in the game until 1.0 when the Warlock and Falconer drop. You gain access pretty early to Frost Claw, I believe around level 10 to 13. And once you have it, you can spec it quite quickly to shoot out multiple projectiles, hit in an area, and of course, shotgun to all hit the same target, which allows you to do great single target as well as great clear. Match that up with the fact that you have Frost Wall and Flame Ward giving you tons of defense, and that Frost Claw counts as an aerial skill giving you tons of ward every time that you cast it, you become very tanky, and this one is really great if you plan on doing any hardcore for the League Starter, as it doesn't require any uniques, has the tankiness, and has great damage, and scales well into the end game. Again, the links for these will be in the description below, so feel free to check them out as we move on to number 3. Coming in at number 3, we have the Shatter Strike Spellblade, and with this one, it is a huge DPS output, but it does do it in spurts. Shatter Strike is going to do tons of damage extremely quick, especially since the skill itself can recast and you can have very high attack speed with it, but it does cost a lot of mana, meaning you'll have to use Focus or Mana Strike to get the mana back and then be able to do that DPS spurt again. However, you can generate tons of ward while it's active. You can build into a ton of mana regen, which really helps offset that, and because it hits so hard that unless you're doing bosses or really really high health single targets you're usually not going to run into any mana issues which allows you to kind of speed farm through the echoes just laying down one melee attack of shatter strike which will recast as you keep moving forward as you can see in the gameplay this build again is brought to you by mcfluffin the links again in the description below but if you're looking for a build that doesn't require any uniques it feels good as soon as you gain access to shatter strike which is roughly early to mid campaign and one that does quite well in the end game with good defense, hardcore viable, and of course is decently fast, well, it might be time for you to check out the Spellblade for a cycle starter. Coming in at number four, we have the Static Orb and Lightning Blast Sorcerer, and this one is a ton of fun, especially if you like going with lightning damages, because the lightning effects in Last Epoch look really, really good. But you get access to Lightning Blast right off the bat when leveling a character, and you can have it doing great damage through the campaign and all the way into the end game. Throw that in mid campaign when you unlock Static Orb, and you can build that to orbit around you and do really big hits as well. So you kind of have like that hammered in feel, except instead 
instead of hammers, you have lightning balls, and then you can hit single targets with your lightning blast, which you can have chain around to other enemies or back onto the single target itself. Allows it to be a really fun play style where you get to just zap all of your enemies as much as you want and usually has no problems with any sort of mana. It's easy to put together because it doesn't require any uniques or idols to get going and it scales well into the end game. It's not the tankiest build in the game, but if you want to try it in hardcore, you definitely can. With all that in mind, that is why I leave it at number 4 on the list for you, and I definitely recommend giving it a try at some point. Coming in at number 5, we have the Flame Reeve Spellblade, and this one's really cool because it has some synergies between the skills where you can buff Flame Reeve for huge bursts of damage with your other skills like Firebrand and through some passives that give you more damage per stack of it you have, which means you can use Firebrand on the enemies, which hits okay and has kind of a ranged melee attack in a straight line, and you get a bunch of stacks of buffs for that as well as you can work up to a guaranteed crit with your next flame reef which is really nice and increase its area and then as you can see you have a nice circle flame reef that goes off and does huge damage in a huge area this is another one of those builds that does not require any uniques although there are some that boost it and it's one that you can level with and does well right into the end game it's also quite tanky now with those skills that you're using that are area skills with access to the rune master to generate ward every time that you're casting them off so now it is also hardcore viable and again it's going to make you feel tanky throughout the campaign it levels well and scales well through the campaign and into the end game with all that in mind that's why i definitely recommend it if you're trying out a spell blade i find this one to be a little bit funner of a playstyle versus shatter strike but shatter strike of course is also very good and coming in at 6th and last but not least is the Hydra Rune Master, and it should come as no surprise that this one feels extremely good leveling up with and into the endgame as you basically summon a turret that does all of the damage for you and does high damage, fast attack speed, and very much has nice crits in its AoE hits which allows you to clear maps extremely quickly. This one is a ton of fun, it has a couple of uniques that revolves around it although they're not mandatory especially for level it up but in the end game they're ones you're definitely going to want to find to really make it pop and that's my list of the top six mage starter builds for you that are all fresh cycle starters that allow you to level really easily a lot of them are viable for hardcore they're very defensive the rune master especially with its new passives that have been introduced to the game and overall all of them are a ton of fun to play and i definitely recommend giving them all a try especially if you're going with the mage and not one of the new masteries at launch but that's going to wrap it up for us i hope these builds at least one of them looks really appetizing to you and you want to give it a shot as always stay safe and i'll see you next time guys